Well, we're on the eve of baseball's opening day, but it's not just the pros that are getting ready. From Darwin to Warren in this week's Finding Minnesota, WCCO's John Lauritsen shows us how Town Ball is honored at a one-of-a-kind museum. Those of us that grew up as kids playing ball love to play ball. We played in the morning, we played at night. From home run derbies in the backyard <laughs> to pickup games at the park. <laughs> Kids across the state have big league dreams, even if most of their success happens on small town fields. I played for the little town of Luxembourg, and they didn't have a catcher, and I'm only 120 pounds, but I love to catch. For Bob Karn, that was essentially the beginning of a Hall of Fame career, the Minnesota Amateur Baseball Hall of Fame, to be exact. We have right now 305 people that are in the Hall of Fame. And you're one of them. I'm one of them. He's also the secretary of the museum in St. Cloud. It details the history of amateur ball and the players who made it happen. Even their nicknames are included. You got Porky, Tanny, Peanuts, Doc. You can't leave those out. The nicknames have to be in, right? They're fun. At one point, 12 Fredrickson brothers made up a team in Eidswold, Minnesota. Nininger in Dakota County was actually the first organized team in the state. They registered just a few years before the Civil War when the uniforms and dress code were slightly different. You don't see <laughs> managers dressing like that very much anymore, do no, you? No, but that's a good-looking guy he's, there. He's ready nice, for a night on the top. Nice mustache. In the early days, you got players from all over. Kicks delivers. Flare shot, shallow left. They were and still are teachers, farmers, and doctors playing in towns like Darwin, Casson, and Hamburg. You drive through many small towns, and they have probably a few uh, bars and a few churches and a few houses, but they have a nice ballpark. Dennis Roysom is also a Hall of Famer who believes competition not only happens on the fields, but between the fields. When Milroy and Springfield get to state tournament, the neighboring towns, then they start fixing up their ballparks because they want to compete too and probably bid for a state tournament. Ray Witzer way up at third, still anticipating that bunt. The town ball commitment is also historic. We had to be at practices, we had to be at every game. The only way you got out of them was marriage, a wedding, or funerals. The museum honors everyone. Lou Brock once played for the St. Cloud Rocks before going on to a Hall of Fame career in the majors. Lou Brock has been a one-man show in St. Louis for years. The first black baseball player in Minnesota named Prince Honeycutt played in Fergus Falls. It's not unheard of that town ball players love the game so much that they play into their 60s. But when your playing days are over, in this Hall of Fame, strikeouts and home runs don't matter nearly as much as heart and soul. The people that are inducted into the Hall of Fame are inducted because they're people that care about amateur baseball. Your skills and statistics really don't matter. In St. Cloud, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. The Hall of Fame began in 1963, and that museum has been at the River Center in St. Cloud since 1992. It is free and open to the public. For information on when it's open, just go to WCCO.com links.